Dear friends, I am Gaurav Singh from Dr. Hari Singh Gaurveshwar Vidyalaya Sagar, Department of Geology. And the fundamental aspect we will discuss today is the stratigraphy of Delhi supergroup. These rocks are exposed in Aravli Craton. Hence, before we talk about Delhi stratigraphy, it is useful to discuss a few things about the Aravli Craton. The earlier studies were carried out by W. T. Blandford 1877, C. A. Hackett 1877, R. D. Oldham and H. Cruikshank 1948. The foundation of Rajasthan geology or Rajputana geology was laid down mainly by two people namely Gupta 1934 and Heron 1953. The craton is composite in the sense that it essentially is made up of two units. Mewar Craton in the east and Mawar Craton in the west, separated by fuller deniament that divides Delhi supergroup of Mawar Craton from the Marwar Craton. Aravli Craton is bounded in the east by a great boundary fault that is GBF that separates it from the Bundelkhand Craton. To the south, the Craton lies in contact with Satpura mobile belt or Indo Gangetic plain occurs to its north. Unlike other cratons, Aravli is devoid of any proper greenstone belt and is characterized by quartzite carbonate pellite suit of rocks. Such rocks are prominently exposed in the famous Aravli Delhi origin of Proterozoic age, resting on a crystalline basement known as banded Nisic complex, that is BGC. The Mesoproterozoic Delhi fold belt is 450 kilometers long, having variable widths in such a way that it is broadest in the north, narrows to the uh, middle and flares in the south resembling a fan. The belt consists of metamorphosed proterozoic sediments which have its western contact with the Mawa Craton marked by fuller lineament as I already told you. Towards the north and south it is uh, lost under the alluvium where its eastern contact is found along the Kaliguman lineament in the north and San Mata complex and with Aravli fold belt in the north towards northeast. The belt is in contact with pre-Delhi rocks. Coming to the division of the fold belt, the sediments of Delhi fold belt was laid down in isolated basins because of which the correlation becomes subjective. It has been divided into two parts by Sinha Roy et al. 1998, which are named as North Delhi fold belt and South Delhi fold belt. The basis for this classification is the granites intruding both the belts. The intrusives are 1440 to 1660 million years for North Delhi fold belt and 730 to 964 South Delhi fold belt. The contact between uh, the parts is east-west faults that is folded in conformity called as Bithur Pisangan line or Rajgarh Pisangan fault. We will discuss the Delhi supergroup under uh, the first Khetri belt of the main North Delhi fold belt along with two contiguous basins named as Bana Lalsoth and Alwar separated by faults. Second is the South Delhi fold belt divided into eastern Bheem and western Sendra basins separated by Bhyawar Nice. Heron 1935 divided the entire Delhi system into lower Arenaceous Alwar and upper Argillaceous Ajabgarh uh, series. Uh, Rilo is refers to the contact between Aravli and Delhi supergroup. Now, the Rilo group of the rocks are considered to form the base of Delhi fold belt. The Banner, Lalsoth and Alva basins are almost similar in stratigraphy having 70 percent plastics, 10 percent carbonate and 20 percent volcanic inputs. The Khetri belt is altogether different and is found to the north of the fold belt. It is separated from the south Delhi fold belt by Bithur Pisangal line. Let us now talk about the North Delhi fold belt. This fold belt has been divided into Banal Alsoth, Alva and Khetri basin. So, we will start with the Banal Alsoth basin. This part is classified into three groups namely Rilo, Ajabgarh and Alva groups. Coming to the Rilo group, uh, this group starts with texturally mature well rounded conglomerates perhaps suggesting the beach face environment along with the quartzite. The next uh, succession is the basic lavas differentiated into 18 flows of Aa and Pa Hui Hui type. 
Amygdala basalt and tuff is found at the basal flow representing quiescence whereas agglomeratic slates volcanic breccia and welded tuff from the upper flow suggesting an eruptive phase. High K2O or potassium content alkaline nature of the basalt. Coming then to the alva group, the alva group consists of conglomerate, orthoquartzites, feldspathic quartzite, arcos and minor shale. Then is the Ajabgarh group. This group disconfirmably overlies alva group and is divided into lower uh, and upper ferruginous quartzite. The sediments of the Bayana Lalsoth basin form a fault bounded asymmetric rift. They show two generation folds with F1 trending northwest southeast and F2 northeast southwest. Then comes the Alva basin. The Alva basin is bounded to the south uh, and to the west by K3 basin. It tapers to the south near Lalgar Graben. It consists of the following units. Then is the Rilo group. The sediments of the group is found in two parts namely Dogeta and Makrana carbonate sedimentation starting with the Dogeta followed by upliftment called as Dosa uplift creating rudaceous and arenaceous uh, parts. Also the succession starts with carbonate like Dogeta which are metamorphosed converting them into marbles used as building stones. It has also followed by an uplift creating acid and basic volcanics which marks the difference between the two subbasins. Then is the Alva group. It consists of the conglomerate and quartzite representing braided fluvial to tidal environment. Then coming to the Ajabgarh group. This group exhibits phosphorites interspersed with carbonate and volcanics. It is associated with phyllites, mica cyst and quartzite. Alva meta sedimentaries show three phases of deformation and are uh, something like uh, Paleoproterozoic in age whose uh, rubidium strontium ages ranges from 16 50 million years. Coming to the K3 basin, the K3 basin is 80 kilometers long and is famous for its copper mineralization that makes it K3 copper belt. The belt has been divided into two parts namely Nadan K3 belt and Southern K3 belt NKB and SKB respectively. Both the belts are probably originated independently from each other as it is evident from different basement cover relationship with NKB having unconfirmable contact and SKB with the dextral fault contact with the basement. Also acid volcanics are found only in this SKB or South K3 belt. North K3 basin ha it has an unconfirmable contact with the basement marked by ferruginous breccia overlain by quartzites, amphibole biotite quartzite, paraamphibolites garnet chloride schist, andalusite biotite schist. The basement is a TTG nice containing enclaves of the pelitic schist and calc silicate rocks. It shows complex pattern of the deformation having anticlines and synclines. The rocks show andalusite sillimanite type metamorphism whereas the basement is polymetamorphic in nature. Several granites include the uh, that intrudes the belt like Gotro, Seoli and Jasarpura giving an age of 1450 to 1850 million years old. Then coming to the South Khetri belt or SKB, this belt is also called as the Shyam Gard group and has basement cover relationship tectonic in nature known as Kantli fault. It consists of storolite garnet schist with uh, pebbly quartzite followed by felsic volcanics and pyroclastics, quartzite and chert also, carbonaceous phyllite, BIF, dolomite, etc. The rocks show kyanite sillimanite type of the metamorphism and multi-phase deformation also. The uh, granites intruding the south Khetri belt show 850 to 1450 million years of the age. Next rock is a cyanite. It forms an intrusion at the junction of the north Delhi fold belt and Sanmata complex making the eastern contact. The body is in contact with pre-Delhi rocks called as Kishan Gad group towards the west. The body is 25 kilometers long, 1 to 5 kilometers wide having 20 to 30 percent feldspathoids. The rubidium strontium or RBSR ages give 1500 million years. Then coming to Nevania carbonatite, this is also 2 kilometers long and half kilometers wide body intruding Untala granite uh, trending northwest southeast due to folding with the east west axis. It is having uh, LRE enrichment and giving pyrochlor as the main component along with the Rohogite, Rodbergite before site and so white. Next body is the albitite. An albitite body almost 300 kilometers long, 
cuts across the Delhi fold belt and basement gneisses. It shows soda metasomatism and mineralization of the uraninite, fluoride, chalcopyrite and molybdenite. This body and its alkaline nature shows an emplacement along uh, intracratonic deep fracture zone. Friends, this was the geology of North Delhi fold belt and now we will discuss the stratigraphy of the South Delhi fold belt. The South Delhi fold belt is a continuous belt unlike that of the North Delhi fold belt and is extended along north northeast south southwest to northeast southwest from Ajmer in Rajasthan to Himmat Nagar in Gujarat. The configuration is conceived earlier from two synclines known as Sendra Basin in the west and Bhim Basin in the east separated by a crystalline basement and the basal conglomerate is identified as Dar conglomerate in the west and Srinagar conglomerate in the east and the overlying rocks were called as the Gugunda group in the east and the Kumbalgarh group in the west. Later on, several strike slip faults are recognized disrupting the stratigraphy. In addition, some arenite pellite belts too do not have any affinity. The tectonostratigraphic basins namely Bheem basin consists of quartzite arenite pellite succession where Sendra basin is dominated by bimodal volcanics and is considered to be older than the Bheem. Let us discuss the Sendra succession first followed by that of the Bheem. Sendra basin. The Sendra basin has been divided into three units namely Basantgarh, Bharutia and Sendra arranged from west to east. Basantgarh forms the westernmost part and is composed of three units namely metabasalt, calcilicates and quartzites and metapellites implying a rift fill succession and the marbles and calcilicates as platformer sediments over the rift basin. Metabasalt, volcanic, basic volcanics, brexias, agglomeratic tuff along with the grey wax show an arc tench setting. The grey wax however show a weak blue schist metamorphism. It essentially represents an ophiolite succession close to the fuller lineament. Coming to the Barothia, the Barothia group is basically a marginal sea succession and is composed of the marbles, calc schist, gravex and volcanic rocks. The bar conglomerate marks the tectonic contact with the pre daily Niacic rocks. Volcanic rocks are bimodal in nature ranging from alkaline tholeites to the rhyolite and even rhyodacite in composition. Then coming to the Sendra, this group consists of the marbles, calc schist, metapellites and volcanic rocks. It is in contact with the Bheem basin in the east and its volcanic rocks are, are neither bimodal. Volcanic uh, rocks are very less here. Coming to the Bheem basin, the rocks of the Bheem basin can be divided into Rajgarh and Bheem group. Rajgarh group shows the marbles, pellitic schist and gneisses which are metamorphosed into amphibolite facies. These rocks have been correlated with pre-Delhi supracrystals surrounding Anna Sagar organizers. Sediments are thought to have been laid down under the continental slope setting. Beam group consists of the schist and marbles with the volastonite. The depositional environment is considered to be the continental shelf. Coming to the fullard ophiolites, the fullard suit of rocks are exposed for a length of 500 kilometers and a width of 40 kilometers right from Khed Brahma via Kui in Gujarat to Ajmer in Rajasthan. They are composed of pyroxene granulites, amphibolites, metagabro and ultrabaphic rocks intruded by serpentinites to quartz diorite plagiogranites. Several closely spaced shear zones separating the arc trench beam group and volcanic arc Sendra group. It also delineates the marginal sea sequence Bharatiya to arc trench Basantgarh group which is tectonically juxtaposed against the ophiolites. Thank you.